Hello. Hey, John. Hey. All right, I think we've got you online now. Um, and I think everybody can hear you. Yay, okay. Okay. So Chris Cooking indicates that we can. Uh, so I think without much further ado, it'd be great if you would just uh, introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your uh, festival and publicist experience, and, and launch right into it. Okay, uh, my name is John Wildman. I am the senior publicist at the Film Society of Lincoln Center. Uh, prior to that, I was the uh, head of press and PR at the American Film Institute and uh, several other film festivals, including uh, the Dallas International Film Festival, um, as well as uh, uh, several film festivals in Los Angeles, uh, the Indian Film Festival of L.A., uh, the Latino Film Festival of L.A., uh, uh, Los Angeles Greek Film Festival, the Feel Good Film Festival, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, so that is that is where I am. And, and like I said, right now I'm at the Film Society of Lincoln Center, and we uh, do everything from the New York Film Festival to New Directors, New Films, uh, and several other uh, uh, tentpole film series and film festivals throughout the year. Uh, and I've been here for the past uh, four or five years now. So that's that's the background. Um, and I think, uh, and, and we're supposed to be talking about red carpets today. And, and now what, we have like 40 minutes left after, after trying to figure this out. So, um, uh, you know, to, where to start, uh, the key, key overall thing to keep in mind, uh, as far as the way that, that I think of red carpets and the way that they should be done is that you have to keep, you have to remember that you're serving both the needs of the press as well as the needs of the filmmakers and talent. Therefore, everything that you're doing, uh, from coordination to communication, needs to be thorough on both fronts. If you approach the red carpet as something to just get done with, then the red carpet's going to suck. It's going to suck for the photographers and for the press, and they may take it out on you, and they may behave badly because of it. And the only thing keeping it from sucking for the filmmakers or talent will be the fact that they might be someone that loves any attention at all, as opposed to successfully uh, you know, representing themselves and their film. I think that's that's one of the biggest keys is that you know when I see people that uh, do red carpets badly, in my opinion, it's because they're viewing it as just something they need to get over with and get done with, and uh, and therefore you know they they basically turn it into a rugby scrum uh, where people you know on both sides of the of the line so to speak are fighting for attention and fighting for their needs rather than having it delivered to them. Um, as far as preparation is concerned, uh, uh, one of the things I do is uh, pre-mark everyone's places with both their outlet names and the names of their photographers or the or the uh, crew interviewers or online or print interviewers. Uh, I always think that everyone should be pre-placed. That way you control it. You don't leave it up to uh, the press or the photographers to jockey for position. Uh, I mean, it is your red carpet, and they are your guests, so you dictate that behavior from the very beginning, what I think is the proper behavior. Uh, I also, um, something that I personally do is if, um, if it's a film festival that has multiple carpets uh, during the course of the festival, uh, one of the things I do is I mix up the order somewhat, you know, keep it democratic. So that way, one press outlet doesn't always get stuck with being the last on the line, or as I call them, the caboose, um, uh, because then they're never getting... Uh, um, or they're frequently uh, getting passed by by larger talent uh, that's exhausted, so to speak, by the time they reach the end of the carpet line. Um, I also, in my preparation, is I will uh, have a list at hand of everyone that I expect to have uh, to be walking the carpet. And that goes beyond just the names that you have on your tip sheet um, that has gone out for the, uh, for the red carpet. It includes uh, <clears throat> the festival executives, it includes studio executives, it includes spouses, board members, et cetera. It's anybody that I think um, that I have any expectation that may arrive at the front of that carpet expecting to have their picture taken or maybe even do interviews. And the reason for that is it's my responsibility to have those names with the proper spelling to identify them for the photographers and interviewers. Because you want, one, you want the people that arrive on your carpet to feel special and expected, and you want to make sure the press information has that correct information right for their IDs. 
I'm constantly going back and forth with the photographers to make sure that they knew everybody they took a picture of and they had the name and the proper spelling of those names for their captioning and for their IDs. Uh, it's something that takes a little bit of time, um, but, you know, again, you're, you're trying to make sure that, that they have everything right. Um, <clears throat> next on the list, I think, is um, uh, coaching the escorts. Um, it's something I, I often say that uh, if I could possibly have it, then I would have uh, the studios or uh, production companies just drop off their filmmakers and talent and go and meet them at the end of the carpet. And my, myself and my team would take care of the rest. Uh, the reason for that is that um, I think when you're escorting the talent, it goes way beyond just walking along with the talent, but ensuring that they stop uh, for each of the photographers and that they're introduced correctly to press for their interviews. You know, in other words, making sure the interview knows who they're talking to and for what film. That sounds obvious, but it, it isn't always obvious, uh, especially as a film, uh, a film festival that has a lot of international filmmakers or a lot of uh, um, independent first-time uh, filmmakers. Um, <clears throat> escorting the talent uh, down the carpet also, uh, you have to do it right to make sure that there are no log jams. Um, you know, that when that happens when people, they start socializing instead of talking to the press when you have, like, you know, producers and executives with, you know, filmmakers, and they're all trying to catch up because a lot of them haven't seen each other since they made the film. Um, and, uh, and so you, you have to uh, kind of dissuade them from doing that to make sure the interviews happen uh, in an orderly fashion. Uh, and also sometimes... Uh, People get hung up on waiting in queue, thinking that they have to do every interview one at a time as they go down the line. And I always coach my escorts to do something I call hopscotching, which means finding the next available interviewer and then backtracking if necessary to a crew that was previously, like you know, they had been already talking to uh, someone else. It's just it's important to keep the momentum. Uh, you know, you usually you have like an hour. Um, more often than not, maybe sometimes an hour and a half to uh, to get a red carpet done, and you need to make sure that there's always you always have that momentum going. Um, and it's also very important for the escorts to communicate constantly with the crews and the interviewers to uh, to find out you know which talent that they that they feel they must talk to, that they absolutely have to, um, and to let them know that they're going to be bringing somebody back to them, so they won't stress and and you know, kind of freak out and neglect the filmmaker that they're talking to at the moment. Um, now, you know, if the talent has a personal publicist or a studio representative escorting them, then you can only control that so much. I mean, that's their client, that, or, you know, that's their filmmaker. However, what you can do is you can have someone from your escort team uh, that can speak to that personal rep while the client is, you know, engaged in an interview to let them know that another outlet really wants to talk to the client, um, or you know, or to know that they, you know, to, to somebody that they had already passed by to ask them if they might want to, you know, come back uh, to talk to them. Um, <clears throat> it's also I also like to have someone from my team um, staged about midway through the carpet and also at the very end of the carpet to make sure that talent filmmakers don't dodge or neglect uh, press members, and especially at the end, again, that the, the people that, that I call the caboose uh, at the end of the carpet, um, they oftentimes get passed by, and, uh, and so you, know, you kind of have to serve as almost like a human roadblock um, to try to you know, encourage uh, people to stop for them as well. Um, you know, because let's face it, it's your responsibility to make sure that the filmmakers and the talent talk to as many people, as many outlets as you can get them to, uh, to do so. Now, so that's the preparation and that's the coaching and to everybody, get everybody ready for the actual you know, carpet to happen. Now, in running the carpet, in a perfect case scenario um, for me, I'll, I will be at the front of that red carpet to welcome the filmmakers and the talent and assign and introduce them to, uh, to the escort and then for me to introduce them and pose them for the photographers. Now, for photos, on that photographer's side of things, because I always like to start with the uh, photography pen um, first off, um, on the photographer side of things, they need the talent to look at them in order to get a photo, now, a good photo. Now, that sounds obvious, but it actually takes a little doing 
which is why photographers shout and they yell to get the subject's attention and why they can make it uncomfortable. Now you can cut down on that yelling, not completely, but at least enough to make a difference and make the whole experience more civil by directing the talent where to look, you know, to the left, to the center, to the right, to someone specifically, you know, and also as you're going along, asking your photographers if they got their shots and, and, and holding your talent until everybody has got their shots. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I place photographers' names on their place marks. So if I don't know them already, then I can see them and I can address them by name to ask if they got their shot. And by doing this, that, that the photographers themselves then actually get the idea that you actually you know, care, you actually give a damn about their needs. And the talent also sees that they're not being thrown into some chaotic mess of flash bulbs and scary paparazzi. Um, you know, I mean, all, and all of that you know, becomes even more important when you have multiple people from one film to pose. You, know, you have you know, a director with his, his star stars or her stars or stars. You have a cast and crew photo. You've got um, uh, the festival heads or sponsor bigwigs that want to get in the shot. And so by controlling that process and the talent with the studio seeing that you've controlled this process, you buy yourself that extra time. And you also buy yourself a little extra patience with the filmmakers, you know, to get those those shots that you want, you know, before they they scram and, and you know and, and and head on down to the interview section, to the crews and and the, and the print section. Um, so that way, you deliver what the photographers want, you deliver what the studio wants, you deliver what your film festival and your sponsors want. Um, that's the whole the whole point of this, you know, doing this thing, right? Uh, and the other, and this is also no, another point. Um, you also need to manage the filmmakers and talent um, that are posing as best you can because you know, they're going to be distracted. They're, sometimes they're going to be just overwhelmed by the activity and the attention. Uh, and so it's, it's going to be up to you to direct them. And, they'll, and they're hap they're more, than, more than usual, they're going to be happy to be directed um, because the, you know, a lot of times, you know, one, they're either enjoying this or two, they hate doing this. The bigger, bigger stars, you know, really, this is just an ordeal for them. That is, you know, kind of the way they come into it. And you can make it less of an ordeal, and you can make them forget that they thought it was an ordeal by, again, directing everything, directing them, directing the photographers, so it's organized. And, and again, it's just not this, this just wave of, of, of flashes and people yelling at them. Um, and you know, so therefore, you know, it becomes, you know, a little bit fun certainly a little bit more, um, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, low impact. Uh, so that's, that's the photo section, and, uh, and then people are off to the interviews. Now, some of that, on the interview, um, you know, I've, I've, I, I just mentioned talking about how I coach the escorts, um, but the reminder of why I think the detailed approach is important is, is this. Um, if you're you know, a press member, if you're like, you know, uh, someone from a uh, TV crew talking to a filmmaker, and you see another, and let's say maybe more famous, so to speak, talent walk by, then you kind of freak out. You, you start stressing, and you get distracted, and therefore, then the interview you're doing um, is not going to be the best one, and so it doesn't serve that, that doesn't serve that outlet, and it doesn't serve the filmmaker or the talent that they're talking to. Therefore, you know, I think it's really important as the red carpet team and the people managing that carpet to constantly be talking with them and to let them know that you know, if they're talking to person A, that to person B that they really, really want to talk to, that you're going to do your best to bring them back and that they, and, and they're not on their own. Um, you know, and, that's also, and also talking to them, let them know, you know, to set them up who is on their way, uh, who, is, who is going to be available to talk. You know, uh, there's there's nothing worse than uh, for a, a journalist to arrive on a carpet and they're expecting, you know, their their producer and they are expecting to talk to this major actor or director, and that major actor or director has no intention to talk to anybody. Well, you know, I want to let them know beforehand. I you know I don't want to do a bait and switch. Um, I want them to, to, to be prepared for everything they're going to deal with um, so they don't have that disappointment because I don't want that disappointment registering on my carpet. I, I don't want the other filmmakers to feel like they're being short, uh, they're being slighted uh, because they're not uh, Mr. or Mrs. Uh, Huge-ass movie star. 
Um, that that's just something I don't want there. Um, so again, it, it, the communication is just key at every step, for, from the very beginning uh, to, to the very end. And because if you don't have that, um, if the journalist uh, on that press line feels like they're on their own and they're not going to receive any help, then they're oftentimes going to going to take matters in their own hands. And that means that they're going to move from their spot. It means they're going to um, disrupt somebody else's interview uh, sometimes, get in somebody else's shot. Uh, or they're, once they hold on to a talent, they're going to monopolize them, and they're going to ask too many questions. Um, and, and so therefore the people following them aren't going to have the opportunity to talk to that, that person. So it just, it, it, you know, once it starts bad, it just keeps going bad. So you want to prevent that. Um, let me see. Hey, John. Um, yeah. I'm going to jump in here for a second and give you a chance yeah, sure. to, to maybe maybe catch your breath a little bit. Um, so what would you say is the best thing to remedy that situation if you realize that you've left somebody alone and they're sort of going rogue? You know, how do you handle that sort of situation? Well, um, if, if somebody is, well, I'll give a very good example. Um, uh, not, not to generalize, but I will. Um, oftentimes, um, uh, film crews from uh, European uh, countries um, are really hard to control on the red carpet. There's just a diff they, they, they look at this in a different way, um, and you know they, they're they're just looking to get their shot or to get their stuff, and they really don't care about you or your rules, um, or you know or decorum or what you're doing, and and, and so you have to be very strict with them. And again, that's why I say, like, you know, why I have uh, people pre-place marked, um, because I don't want, I don't want, uh, say, one crew, and and I, and even goes to this extent, bullying another crew, um, or like I said, leaving, uh, leaving that designated press area, uh, you know, and if if that happens, then you know, then 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 we will, you know, we'll police them, and you know, we'll tell them to go back to their spot. Um, will you know, and, and 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 basically, there's just no argument to be had. And if and if they continue, um, if they don't get the hint, and they uh, you know, and and they keep abusing it, um, the worst case scenario is that I will actually remove them completely from the press line. Um, at best, it you know that that kind of behavior may be what I call their swan song, their last uh, their last visit to my press line. Um, you know, and I, I now I won't. You know, I won't uh, do it in a way to say, uh, you know, create a scene in front of talent or filmmakers. You know, I'll be, uh, you know, I'll be firm. Um, you know, uh, but I also, you know, am, am, I, you know, I don't want that to become a show. And uh, and so, if you know, if someone is persistent in their bad behavior, then you know, then we'll manage it best we can. And then at the end. At the at the end of the uh, after the carpet is done, then we'll handle them. Do we'll, you know? We'll you know, you know, tell them you know uh, that we didn't appreciate that, and you know, and that'll be the last carpet. Um, you know, and I've had to do that a few times. Um, you know, we we had uh, you know through you know the, the the past few years, there have been you know more than a couple times where someone you know did not on the press side um, behave the way that we think they should behave. And uh, myself and my partner here, uh, uh, David Nin, we you know we take it very seriously, and and like I said, we we uh, we are pretty strict, pretty strict on how we handle them. Cool. Well, I have a, a what might be a related question, or might be something that you're going to cover later in the talk. So if you want to take a sip of water, I'll uh, read this one out, and then you can uh, let me know whether you want to respond right away or or save it for the end. No, I would, uh, I would say, um, you know, I, I, I would say, you know, pretty much. I mean, listen, this, this, this is not. I mean, this is not really. This is not complicated stuff. Um, and 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 frankly, you know, the only thing that I would add to, to that initial, you know, uh, um, laying out of, of how I approach this, is what I is just the, the troubleshooting aspect of, of the carpet, and um, and more often than not, the troubleshooting happens. Due to time management issues, because let's face it, we're, what we're talking about is um, getting our filmmakers and our talent to go through a carpet um, and get them off the carpet in time to introduce 
um, the screening, or you know, or or to you know go to a, a dinner or you know or, or or some something. You know, you have a schedule to keep keep to, and sometimes um, you are kind of thwarted along those lines by how late that filmmaker or that talent is delivered to you. Um, I had one time, you know, a major star uh, literally overslept and so arrived on my carpet a half hour into it. So the one person that everybody's looking forward to talk to and could take pictures of now had 30 minutes to do so. And we're talking a 100-foot long carpet. Um, so there was a lot of people to work through. And so, again, the answer is constant communication. You know, and that and that goes both on the photography side. It also goes on the cruise and uh, online and the print side to let people know when they can expect somebody. And when you're troubleshooting like that, to let people know, all right, now we have to um, we have to modify the way we go about this. And in that case, um, this person arrived so late that I went up to each of the um, uh, the video crews and I said, listen, you guys have one question maybe two if you keep it short, but don't monopolize this guy because a lot of you people, you know, want to, we want every, as many people to talk as possible and, you know, and I don't want somebody monopolizing him for 15 minutes when I only got, uh, you know, a half hour. And then the, uh, the online and print, um, I went up and basically grouped them into groups of four and five and said, all right, you, you're going to look at this like a junket. And the four or the five of you are going to share two questions, and you guys are going to share his responses. And we either do it that way, or nobody's going to get to talk to him, because we just don't have the time. And, you know, and, and again, if you're constantly talking, and, and they realize that you are doing your best to, uh, you know, to get them something that they can use, that they can write about, or they can have on camera, or what have you, then they'll work with you. Very, you know, it, it's almost never that then somebody um, you know, uh, resists that and still acts on their own and you know in a in a uh you know in a single minded manner um but yeah but, but that that's pretty much how I approach that um and you know and like i said it as you know the way that we have found we, you know with with the system um everybody plays ball everybody gets uh gets their stuff and uh you know and it doesn't become like i said it doesn't become that ordeal that that uh that some of the stars or filmmakers think it was. So there you go. That's that's how you do it. And uh, and yeah, let's let's bring on the questions. Cool. Well, I think you inadvertently may have answered the the first question, which was uh, any tips on closing the carpet when you have a hard must end 15 minutes before screening start time. Are there any other tips you have along those lines when you really got like? Is there a nuclear option that you reserve well, no. only well, for like the hardest ones? <laughs> No, no. Listen, you know, and here's this is something that 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 um, uh, that, that that we will do also is if um, like the, this year for New York Film Festival we had um, three cases, especially with our galas, where we had extremely large casts. Like I had 20 people, I think, for Inherent Vice, and like 16 people for uh, Gone Girl, and like another dozen people uh, for Birdman. And in each of those cases, um, of course, everybody wants like the the the, the giant family photo, uh, as we call it. Um, well, that's that's a really tough thing to get with even four or five people. I mean, you know, it it takes you know it takes a lot of management to pull that off. Um, and with that insane amount of people, there's there's no way you're going to get that you know um, you know without really doing it well. And uh, and so in this case, we said, well, we're not even going to try to do it on the carpet itself because it's just too many people, and the photographers, there's there's no way they they could capture, you know, with with any kind of I don't know panoramic lens or, or whatever from their position to be able to capture all those people anyway. Um, but we also knew that again, we're you know we have to get everyone on stage to do this intro. So I basically told I told every single person that had ears that we were going to end that carpet at 10 minutes to the hour, and which would then give me 10 minutes to stage that photo. So what that meant is um, every press member down the line, I told them to keep in mind that we were going to end, say if we started the carpet at, at 8 o'clock, we were going to end that carpet at 10 till 9, and there's going to be no, 
no leeway to that. Ten till nine, everyone was going to leave that carpet. And then during for the studio, um, during the uh, during the pre pre carpet walkthrough, we told every one of them, every handler that they were going to have that they brought into it, that at ten till, they had to have their talent off that carpet. And then each one of my escorts, they knew ten minutes till everybody leaves the carpet. So then it, at ten till. I'm leaving. I'm leaving myself, and I'm and and left somebody else at the front of the carpet in case there were like some some late arrivals for um, guests, people that weren't actually in the film, but were just like celebrity guests that were attending, and photographers would still want to photograph. So I leave them there, and then as I'm walking down the carpet again, I whisper in the ear of every single rep and every single escort that had somebody talking to somebody, and I said, "You've got ten minutes to get them off now." Now you've got 10 minutes off. Every single person, and then, and then you know, went into the lobby where we were going to shoot that, that group photo. That's, that's the way you can do it. Again, if, if you communicate well ahead, you communicate throughout, and you communicate at the very end, this is, this is when they, they leave, everybody's going to be on board because they, don't know any, you know, they, because they have no other choice. It's your carpet. And you know you're going to close it down when you when you close it down. And the truth is, you know your talent is going to be doing what their rep tells them to or what their escort tells them to. Yes, you know sometimes you know that you know they may want to like do some high fives or sign some autographs as they're making their way, you know, into the theater. Um, but by doing that, you buy yourself enough time, you know, for for that. And so even if you lose, you know, 30 seconds to a minute for them to, to, to do some quick autograph signing, you are still going to get them in there at the time that you need. And, and yeah, that's, that's the thing. We're, we're, always, we're always looking at that clock, always trying to keep on time. Cool. Well, I'm going to uh, unmute one of our attendees to ask his, uh, his question because it's uh, a little, little involved. So hold on one second. Okay. Hey, Colin, you there? Hey, Chris. Hi, John. Uh, hey. Very much enjoying this. Lots of tips that you're sharing. Uh, I wanted to um, share some obser observations and ask a question. Um, having had a chance to watch you in action almost every day during the New York Film Festival, the, the sort of big takeaway for me was the carpet was in control, and it was really a function of your personality which manifests in you know being very clear that it was your carpet and that's quite uh different than some press lines i've seen where who's in charge seems kind of vague did you right. have to kind of grow into that level of comfort before you were able to be that assertive or was that something that you just felt kind of had to be done from the get-go uh, it, it kind of had to be done from the get-go. I mean, I, the first carpets that I did um, were at a AFI Fest. And, um, and, and again, it, it, the important thing to remember about all this is that the people, whether they be the filmmakers um, you know, or, or, or the press involved, everyone, they have, they have their needs. And if they understand that everything you're doing is at the service of getting them what they want and what they need, they will happily go along with you. And, you know, and, and what, what oftentimes happens as far as people being shy to, to, to run a carpet or something is when they have like a major director or they have a major star or they have like an intimidating like studio head or producer, um, you know, that, that's, that's part of it. And, you know, and, and they're afraid to, you know, to basically more to, there's no other way to put it, to boss that person around. But what you always have to keep in mind is that those people are, no matter how big a person that is, they are happy to be bossed around if they see that it's for a purpose. You know, and uh, one of the funniest examples, um, I was doing the um, uh, AFI uh, Life Achievement Award, and they will stage a a mock ceremony handing off of a trophy uh the the the, uh, the life achievement award in case they don't get that shot during the actual show and so i'm standing there with and this was for uh we had uh, uh michael douglas that year and so i'm standing there with um uh the head of paramount 
and the head of Fox, I mean, literally the chairman of both of the Summers Redstone, and I, and I forgot who the, the, the Fox guy was, and the head of AFI, and we're all standing there waiting because Michael Douglas and uh, Catherine Zeta Jones were running late. And so I said, well, why don't, um, uh, why don't I get these shots out of the way of our executives so that when Michael and, uh, and Catherine get, uh, get here, then we can just insert them and get the shots involving them, and all the other stuff will be done, and then we can get on with the, the red carpet for the show itself. And, uh, and uh, I figured the studio, uh, or the TV thing was, I think it was TV Land. And so the AFI person was like, well, that's great. And the TV Land person, this is great. And they're like going, oh, but who are we going to, before they even had a chance to even ask the question, I just started announcing to everyone, this is what we're going to do. And uh, Summers, if I could have you over here, and, and you know, Mr. Fox, I could have you over here. And, and, if, and, and, and they all look up like, oh, okay, it's that guy. And that guy is telling us, you know, what to do to get these photos done. So we're, we're, we'll do what he tells us because he obviously is running this. And in each one of these cases, that will always be the case. You know, again, if it's your festival, it's your festival and it's your red carpet. You know, yes, a film, you know, may be the gala film that night or it may be the lead film that night, but it's not their carpet. It's your carpet. Um, you know, and they, are, they will be very happy, like I said, as long as they know that, that you know that everything you're doing is you know is going to benefit them. They're happy to let you take the lead, you know. Because let's face it, you know, for them, it's that's a pain in the ass um, to you know to to have to corral all those people or those personalities. So they're more than fine to let you take that on, you know, of your of yourself. Okay, I think our next question is coming from Kristen. Kristen, are you going to unmute yourself for this? Or are you going to disappear? Hi. Hi, there John. Hey. Um, so you may have covered this, but um, I just do you have any advice for smaller festivals who might not have that might not have the big name talent that uh, obviously New York Film Festival would garner? Um, and how can you attract press to cover your carpet regardless? Is that a ch I mean, did you ever have that challenge to work with earlier in your career? You know, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've done. I've done a lot of smaller festivals, and and yes, and 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 you know, and getting getting press to cover those carpets, um, yeah. oftentimes is a challenge. I mean, you know, if if you're a regional festival, uh, like the one I just got back from uh, the the Tall Grass Film Festival, or or you know, or um, you know, even Dallas kind of applies in in, in this regard. That uh, if you're putting on a, uh, you know a a good professional show, so to speak. Then you should still get press participating. Um, now, you know, again, it may not, you know, it's not going to be to the level of, say, you know, L.A. or New York, um, but you can still, you know, you can still stage um, a nice-looking press line, you know, even if it's a, you know, a local paper or two or a blogger or three, you know, if, if you have, you know, three or four people asking questions um, with, you know, a couple tripods. Um, with, with crews, and you have like you know uh, four or five you know photographers, either from local papers or again from uh, from local blogs or what have you, for a smaller festival, well that that that's a nice presentation, and you know and 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 and, and more than fine uh, for for the expectations um, you know of, of the filmmakers that are coming to that, and so I'm, I'm oftentimes you know uh, um, when I do go to regional festivals, you know kind of a um, Amazed that you know that they don't take advantage of that because let's, let's face it you know if, if um, you know if if you're in that that regional fest and you do have uh, some uh, some filmmakers that are making the trip into it then I would think that they, you know, you'd want to make as big a deal about that as possible now you know I also understand that you know there's a big difference between say what I do here where we have we had literally 16 red carpets over the two plus weeks. Um, and a fest that really has like maybe the, the manpower, or even the energy, to maybe do one of those, like say for their opening night, and then have everyone participate. Um, you know, we did that actually in LA for the Feel Good Film Festival, um, where we had one red carpet, and it was opening night. We had every single filmmaker that would attend there, and because we also knew that for the press, for the level of talent and the type of film festival it was, that they weren't going to come there multiple nights. We had one shot to get them there uh, to pay attention to that festival, and and so we 
all, we put all the eggs into that one basket, and it made for a very impressive, you know, red carpet. And then the rest of the festival, you know, you would just do, you know, like, you know, uh, get single shots with people in front of the step and repeat before their films or what have you. But their big red carpet experience was that opening night. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I, I want, uh, by the way, this is a side note, but Jim's here listening. Hey, to John. <laughs> oh, hey. Random. random. <laughs> Sorry, side note. Um, I had another question too, though. Can you, you talked about a tip sheet earlier, and can you just maybe? I don't know if everyone knows exactly what a tip sheet might look like. Can you just maybe explain yeah. what those, what those, what, what that would include? No, absolutely. Yeah, the the the, the tip sheet or media alert um, is something that you send out to the press uh, to let them know who you have coming to, to, to that red carpet. Um, it's the talent, um, or, or celebrity guests or any other people of interest, um, you know, and, and locally, again, that could be, you know, everyone from local politicians to, you know, to your, to your fest execs, to, you know, um, wealthy board members, you know, or what have you, socialites, you know, for that, for that area. Um, it has a description of, you know, the film or films, um, you know, that, that are being featured that night or, or that is the gala presentation, as well as, you know, the, the, the time for the press check-in, uh, the time that the, that the red carpet would start, and the time that, you know, if it is a gala film, the time that that, that film um, would begin. You know, it all, and, you know, and then it has information, um, your contact address, you, you, where they can RSVP uh, for a spot on that press line, um, as well as additional in, you know, in information. But basically, it's something you're sending out to all the press to try to get them interested and get them to commit to, you know, to come to your red carpet and to cover your red carpet. Um, and, and, and that's the, the, that tip sheet um, you know, serves you know, multiple purposes. Um, it serves as, as, as more or less bait to get people to come and then it also serves on the day of the event, on the day of the red carpet, as the backup information um, for the people that are attending, for, for your photographers, so they have the list of names um, of people they're expecting to photograph. Yeah. Um, and then, and, 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 and as well as for the, um, the people doing the interviews, so they have some background on, you know, on the movie um, or movies um, that they're going to talk about, you know, in case they didn't do their homework beforehand, well, then you've given them a little shorthand so, you know, so as the people come up to their microphone, you know, they can at least have something to lead with to ask them. Great. Thanks. Would you be willing maybe to, to um, share one of yours, even if we were to, like, put in dummy pictures or something, just to show kind of what a template might look like? We, that might be a nice takeaway. Yeah, yeah. I'll send that along. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. I think there's another question um, from Rachel. Um, Actually, we have one from Charles before that. And oh, sorry. Rachel's, and I okay. think that'll that'll round it out. Okay. All right. So Charles's question is: Do you have any pointers for staging uh, print journalists versus film versus radio? Okay. Uh, it's a good question, and, and 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 frankly, it can be done a few different ways. Uh, traditionally. Your crews, um, your film crews are going to be up first. Your and 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 those, you know, on a larger sense, is going to be you know things like Entertainment Tonight and Access and uh, Extra and CNN. Um, and then, or for regional fest, is going to be like you know the prominent local uh, television stations, like you know the uh, um, the local you know ABC or NBC or CBS affiliates, um, you know that that type of thing. And and then there will be uh, streaming crews, people that are doing uh, interviews for video that are going to stream online. And then your, your last section would then be your print or your online journalists or your radio. Um, and usually the, the reasoning behind that is that you've got a bunch of tripods um, and, and then at the end, you can you, know, you have people that are basically it's just a person with a microphone um, or you know, or you know, or, or in, if they're really old school, a person with a notepad. Um, although you rarely see that anymore. Um, but I also um, believe it's not a bad idea to to shake that up sometimes and have um, patches of. Again, um, in in a larger sense, um, there are people. The first people are always going to be like your major, your most, so to speak, your most important crews and outlets. 
And then I then I've broken it up sometimes by then having what I consider um for me uh the the the, the more important um online or print people. And for me that would be like the trades, variety, Hollywood reporter, um or New York um uh, the, the New York uh, New York Post, New York Times, uh the New Yorker um uh or I'm sorry, New York Magazine. And then follow then with your next level of crews for um, for online uh, streaming for for your like smaller outlets, and then finish up with you know radio or what have you. So it, th- there's no hard and fast rule with that. Um, but I would, um, like I said before, um, you know if you do have if you are in, in the, the position or the type of event where you have multiple events, you know I would shake it up. And, you know, there are people that, you know, that you always have to have first, either, like I said, either because it's a major outlet or it's a sponsored outlet. You know, it's one of your festival sponsors, so, of course, they need to be up front and be first. Um, you know, but beyond that, I, I you know, again, it, it, you know, I think that you have some play uh, to, you know, uh, to, to, to mess with that a little bit. Great. We have one one last question. Uh, it's from Rachel. I'm going to see if Rachel is uh, on audio and can ask the question herself. Hold on just one second. Hey, Rachel, are you there? Oh, she can't. She's at work. <laughs> nice going, Rachel. Uh, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> see, that's what happens when you webinar at work. Uh, but we appreciate it, Rachel. Thank you for showing up. Uh, Rachel's question is, how do you deal with red carpet badges versus general press badges? How do you credential red carpet press when only a certain number of red carpet press can fit and or the studio may only want specifically certain press to cover the carpet? Uh, Very good question. Uh, We handle the red carpet press almost, I wouldn't say entirely, but almost um, completely separate from um, our uh, our credential press for the festival itself. Uh, that's something that 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 um, is a little bit specific to uh, uh, to the New York Film Festival. Um, but since our credential press, uh, our, our press accreditation only handles um, getting seats into our press and uh, industry uh, uh, screenings, um, we look at that as a completely different side from um, uh, from the red carpet. Now, I will say that. Um, you know, I'm uh, what I usually do rather than have uh, credentials badges uh, for red carpet press is that upon sign in, um, we use colored um, wristbands and uh, and use like a different you know we, we we recycle we have like you know say three or four different colors over the course of the festival um, and and then just keep keep changing up the colors as as the uh, as the red carpets go along, um, but. I don't, you know, again, that that's, you know, that can go festival by festival, and if you have, you know, a smaller regional festival, um, then you likely are not doing press screenings, and you know, and so then you likely are uh, credentialing press overall. However, just because someone is credentialed, you know, <clears throat> does not mean that they get access to your red carpet. Um, I think you still have to be very strict in doing an RSVP and a confirmation. Um, you know, before that. Otherwise, again, you're inviting a headache um, as you're there with people, you know, expecting just to show up, which means that, one, uh, either you won't know who you have on the press line, um, and so you won't be able to place mark people, or you can have more people show up than you have room for. And if they have an expectation that they can get on, well, then they can be pretty damn unpleasant um, when they're told that no, you don't have room for them. So, um, you know, so I, I, I think that uh, that goes again into the use of, of the tip sheets and the media alerts to make sure that uh, anybody who wants a spot in your press line that they previously RSVP and they get a confirmation from you. Otherwise, there's going to be no room at the end for them. Great. Well, John, I think that wraps it up for us since you have some, some last parting words. <laughs> All right. All right. John Wildman, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm sorry about the rough start, but you recovered beautifully like any publicist would. Any good publicist. Well, you know, well, well again, it, it looks like we're on time, and so we can start the movie on time. 
There you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thanks. All right. John. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And everyone else, we'll see you next month. We'll let you know what's next. Thank you. I believe what's next is uh, date the uh, ticketing and data mining, right? Oh, you know more than I do. Yeah, I John Gann will be here, uh, I believe, in just two short weeks. It's not long from now uh, to talk about um, all the amazing John Ganny type stuff that he does. He's not here today because he's in India, apparently, but uh, we'll have him with us um, with some fascinating stuff. Great. His presentation at the at IFP was great too. So. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, Chris.